Hello everyone, in this tutorial I will show you my pipeline between Cinema 4D and Substance Painter. In Cinema 4D I will show you how to prepare your both low poly and high poly meshes, how to prepare and set up your UVs, and how to set a vertex color for IDs. In the Substance Painter I will show you how to bake your mesh maps such as normals, IDs, uh, ambient occlusion, curvature, etc. You know, then I will apply smart materials it's gonna be really simple and fast then at the very end i will show you how to export these textures to cinema 4 d especially for octane render so without further ado let's start so let's say that this is your final model actually let me delete these uv tags as well so we will get a perfect fresh start first thing uh, I believe that you will notice that the object is too low. If you open up the wireframes, you know, it may not be too low for Cinema 4D. Like you can put the subdivision surface and it's gonna be okay. But when you want to texture it in other software, it might be a problem. So I usually put a subdivision surface over the top and set the subdivision level to 1. Let's check it with the wireframes. And this is gonna be my main object. This is the old one, the very low one, and this is the new one. The thing that you should be careful about is the subdivision editor and subdivision renderer number. Don't make these too high, like two. Keep them at one. Then we can make it editable. Press C. Now uh, these don't have any UV W tags. Select them all. Right click. Material tags and add a set UVW from projection. Now we can switch to UV edit layout. I'm gonna start with the blade, a solo it, switch to edge mode. This time I will use a different technique. Uh, I will use the funk tag. First, let's click on the funk tag. I'm gonna set it to something like 90 degrees. Then I will select sharp edges, select the first one, then press Ctrl and Shift select continue to select by pressing ctrl and shift select same here the point is to select all the sharp edges same on these as well press ctrl and shift select the last one then we can select these Control and shift, select these, and these are gonna be the last ones. Right now, I'm gonna right click and say break funk shading. If you are familiar with smoothing groups in 3ds Max, this is very similar to that. Let's switch to model mode and change our viewport. So, whenever I select my blade and Let's switch to edge mode to select everything. If I go to select and select font break selection and uncheck override font tag, you are gonna get these sharp edges. So we can select them all and say UV unwrap. That's all. I'm gonna switch to polygon mode, select only these and UV rectangularize. Now let's switch to other one. Uh, I'm gonna Click on the solo two times, or you can just select viewport solo automatic. So whatever you select will be in solo mode. As I did before, let's go to funk tank and let's set it to 90 degrees. So that we are gonna get an overall smooth shading. Then edge mode to select everything. As I did before, I'm gonna select the sharp edges. All right, now I will right click, say break funk shading one more time. All right, it's looking nice. I will switch to edge mode, selection, funk break selection, select all, and UV unwrap. 
this is a little off so i'm gonna double click on it in polygon mode uv rectangle rise this one is okay now let's switch to cylinder as i did before let's set it to above 90 89 degrees so that we are gonna get a smooth shading overall edge mode select sharp edges then i'm gonna break this we can either continue with that like we can say you can wrap or you can come anytime and select funk break selection and select all uv unwrap for this we need an exit point a seam we can either do it in 2d view or 3d view but let's stick with the 2d view double click on these edges but make sure that you select these islands only switch to edge mode open up uv unwrap options and enable restrict to polygon selection and hit ok I will switch to polygon mode, say UV rectangle rise, same here, double click, edge mode, double click, then UV unwrap, I can rectangle rise this. I will do the same process on this. Okay, these are done. Now the bottom one. 90 degrees edge mode let's select loop selection UNL I'm gonna start from here same here then of course here and let's say here I believe this should be enough we can break the funk actually I should give you one tip you should break these edges uh, forms while you model the objects so it's gonna be much faster when you are unwrapping your objects now i will switch the edge mode one more time form break selection select all and you will unwrap these again should be cylindrical objects these need an exit point you will unwrap polygon mode rectangularize same again okay this one is done then the last one i'm gonna set it to 90 edge mode loop selection unl let's start from here then here then let's say here if i make a full selection you are going to see that this is going to be too long and it has no exit point so i will add these edges as the seams select the first one press ctrl and shift select the last one let's hit uv unwrap oh no because i have this option enabled i will uncheck that and hit ok looks like these are overlapping so let's switch to edge mode double click one more time on these edges make a field selection unf i'm gonna hold this down okay i think we are done with the uv unwrapping i will turn off solo and i'm gonna combine all of these objects considering that the object is very simple i don't think we need multiple objects if necessary we can split these anytime we want after texturing but for now let's uh, keep them as a single one which will be simpler and easier for us to texture in substance painter connect connect objects and delete this is gonna give us these overlapping uvs but it is really easy to fix switch to polygon mode press ctrl a select all go to uv picking enable these options and hit apply and that's all let's enable uv map the orientations may be uh, off but uh, it's not gonna be a problem another thing is to reversing the flips normals 
such as this one. Double click on that UV uh, polygon islands. Right click reverse normals. I will switch to model mode. And this is our low poly version. I mean, blow is very relative, but for me, this is gonna do the job. If you want though, you can lower the polygon count by removing the excessive edges, but I would highly suggest to do that after you texture your object, since uh, dissolving edges will not destroy your UVs. For example, if you select these and dissolve them, you're gonna see that they are not break any of the UVs. So we can do that later. Now we will need a hurry version of this one. Press Ctrl, duplicate. I'm gonna hide this. Rename that to I. Actually, before doing that, I'm gonna set my vertex weights, which will be very useful for baking the IDs. I'm gonna do that by vertex colors. First, right click, other tags, and add a vertex color. It's gonna turn black, but don't worry. I will switch to polygon mod, press E. I'm gonna double click on these since these are the same object or they will share the same material like a metal one. So I'm gonna double click on the vertex color and set a color for these like red and say apply selected, press E. Now I'm gonna select, uh, let's say that I'm gonna double click on this, then make a field selection, UNF, press E, then double click on this. I will assign a different color for them, like blue, apply selected. Now I will switch to switch back to polygon mode one more time, press E. This time I need to select this part, switch to edge mode actually. Then make a field selection. Then press E. I can select this as well. Go back to vertex color. Let's set it to green and apply selected. Vertex colors are done. Now I'm gonna duplicate that one. I did rename that to high. Put the subdivision surface over the high. Now we should be careful, careful about these seams because if I select the low one, we are gonna see that these two objects will not share the same UVs. This one is obviously way smoother, but we can change it to boundary. So they will have the same UV space, every polygon and every UVs. Now we can make this editable, press C, I'm gonna rename that to high. Now it's time to export, select the high, go to file, say export selected objects as FBX. In the settings, you should enable normals and vertex colors. Other than that, just hit OK and save your high poly. And now I'm gonna hide this one and unhide that one, file, export select objects as fbx one more time I use the same settings as the previous one and say ok for the moment we are done with the cinema 4 now i will switch to substance painter here we are in substance painter first thing i will go to file new and i'm gonna select my high poly mesh select high you don't need to change anything just say ok here is our high poly object First thing, I will go to edit and bake mesh maps. First thing, let's switch to 4K. Then uh, I'm gonna bake another normal map, but for the moment we can enable this option. For the analyzing, I am gonna go for subsampling 4x4. Four four. Then word space normal is okay. ID, I'm gonna change it to Vertex color, remember the vertex color we set in Cinema 4D. Then for the amb ambient occlusion, I'm gonna set this value to the maximum. Same for the curvature. Position is okay. 
for the thickness i'm gonna set it to very very high then say bake selected textures all right baking is finished i'm gonna say okay now let's check the baked maps first one let's see the normal all right nice world space normals this is look good now the id is looking great just like we set in cinema 4d now let's check the animated collision this is looking also great then curvature is nice all right everything is looking great now let's go back to material now i will switch back to my low poly version project configuration now i will select my low poly version so, okay perfect now i will go to back mesh maps one more time this is gonna be just for the normal map normal i will select my high poly version uh, we can uncheck this use low poly mesh as high poly mesh and we are looking good just select the normal map and say back select textures perfect you can see the effect we have a very smooth surface All right, now let's check the smart materials. The Substance Painter is entirely based on these baked maps. Uh, so, for example, let's select a metal smart material and, for example, this one. You can delete this. You can see the effects of the baked maps. It's looking great. Now I will use our IDs because we just want the metal to be applied to the blades. To do that, add a mask with color selection, pick a color, and I'm gonna select the red one. Perfect. Now let's make a quick plastic materials. I'm gonna look for plastic. Let's apply that to our, our steel material. Okay, let's add a color selection and I'm gonna select all of these green parts. I will create another material. This is gonna affect only the blue parts, but this time in this material I will change its color to something like black all right that's all no of course you can spend more time with the texturing but for this tutorial this is going to be enough no i will show you how to export these textures go to file export textures in the output template i will use redshift it works great with octane and select your output then hit export Export is done. Now I will switch back to Cinema 4D. Let's set up a quick obtain HDRI and render setup. Obtain live window. First thing I will change it to pet tracing. I'm gonna lower that. Then, of course, an HDRI environment. Select an HDRI. I will hide to high poly and enable low poly. This is the high one, it's just for the baking. Uh, let's see it's render. Okay, now it's time to set up our material. Go to materials, create a universal material. Double click on that. You can close that. Open up node editor. Then go to the folder which you exported your substance painter textures and drag them into the Octane Note Editor. It looks like Roughness. Link that to the Roughness. This one is a normal map. Link that to the normal map. This one is Metalness. Link that to the metallic part. This one... Displacement. Yeah, we are not gonna use that, just delete it. Color. Link that to the Albedo. And your material is ready. 
just assign this material to the wall and here you go we can add of course a subdivision surface over the top of the wall i will create a thin camera some exposure I will add another HDRI for the background. Alright guys, that was it. Hope you liked it and learned something new. Uh, there is not much uh, sources on between Cinema 4D and Octane and Substance Painter. I hope that uh, this video helps. So, I will see you in the next choice.